of, of the course, you know, that the course is all about that joy. And when she said, you know, it's a surprise and people don't know to the last minute, it's, it's so beautiful, the whole thing, because it brings up that little child of excitement of who it's going to be. And then it's exciting for me because I get to be here and I'm like, boo, I'm here. (laughs) So it's like this beautiful, I don't know, just innocent way. And then, and then Stephanie told me this morning that they don't really introduce and nothing special and, and, and they don't really think about it too much. And I was like, Oh my God, she's speaking my love language. Like, yes, please. It's just, that's, that's what this is about. It's about following guidance. It's about trusting. It's about walking the talk. And this is how we do it. We show up in joy and in that innocence. So I feel really, really called to start in a meditation and I wanted everyone to join me in. And I love this cheerleader here with this redhead. Let me see her name. Ellie, you're on fire over there. You're just like, (laughs) she's so sweet. (laughs) All right. So we're going to start with meditation now. Um, Just a short little, little meditation. So I invite you to close your eyes here. Let's go ahead and get centered, bring spirit in. Okay. Maria, can you hear ah, She can't. Okay. That's fine. Just calming down the mind. When you're ready, you can close your eyes. And let's relax. Breathing in through the nose. Out through the mouth letting go. In this space, the space between the words is the goal, presence. So I invite you to let go of any thoughts, any barriers to this present moment that gives you everything you need. All the love you can ever desire is here. So give yourself the gift of going inside And remembering for an instant that you have never left the mind of God. Letting go of thoughts. Letting go of the chatter. Letting go. See as light on top of your head. You see as that light goes down your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Kind of drooping, relaxing. You see as that light moves down your chest area. Letting go of thought, going deeper. Deeper as you go through the hips and the legs. Deeper. All the way down to the tip of your toes, letting go of thoughts, letting go of the barriers, going deeper. So at this time, you take these words into your heart. Before that, we invite the Holy Spirit into our minds. And you see the Holy Spirit now in your meditation. You see Spirit with you. You see that you have this light shining in your heart. And that same light is in Spirit and Holy Spirit. And you become a blending with that light 
in oneness. You become one with the Holy Spirit. And with Spirit's help, you take in these words. I share God's will for happiness for me. And I accept it as my function now. I share God's will for happiness for me and I accept it as my function now. God being love is also happiness. To fear him is to be afraid of joy. And you feel Holy Spirit's embrace in you as you. God being love is also happiness. And it is happiness I seek today. So you step forward in faith and confidence on a path. Certain of your father. Certain of your inheritance. Certain of your birthright certain of your beauty, certain, certain of who rules your world, our father, our creator, you walk forward in that confidence with spirit in spirit. And you recognize you cannot fail because you're seeking the truth. And together now we join on this path in oneness. All the souls that are here and that will be watching this later, we all make a circle holding hands. Holy Spirit power here, remembering our inheritance, remembering our Father. You are so beautiful. You are so perfect. You just can't mess it up. You take these words into your heart and you begin to come back now very gently without opening your eyes. You can put your hand on your heart in gratitude to Holy Spirit for its love and its journey with you here. Taking a deep breath here with the hand on the heart. And in that confidence that you are God's son or daughter and your willingness to remember that now. And now as we all come back in, you can begin to gently open your eyes very, very gently, very, very lovingly. All together we declare, I am love. In love. And I am willing. And I am willing. Amen. Amen. I hope you got this on a record. Yes. Good. <laughs>
also trusting in my brothers and sisters in receiving the information and energy that I need for this session, whatever is helpful for the whole, for the curriculum. And I was really guided towards these pages and I, I was just gonna open the book and figure it out. And I'm so grateful for spirit taking us where it took us. Um, where I was touched deeply, and you guys can share with me at the end how the meditation went for you, but where I was touched deeply was just the recognition that I am in the mind of God. And also knowing that I am God's child and that I, I can't mess it up and that there's nothing wrong with me, um, no matter how much I think that sometimes. So what is, what is happiness based on the course? What is happiness? I know that the title is live, how to live happy. And, you know, happiness, and actually here on 103, it says happiness is an attribute of love. So the course is saying happiness is an attribute of love and, and we are love. So that means that we're also happiness. So how are we, how do we live happier is by the recognition that we are love. And that takes something. It takes something. It takes the big fat F word, right? Not that word. No, no, no. Naughty, naughty. Stop it. Stephanie Lloyd, stop thinking. Stop thinking about that. No. The big fat F word, forgiveness, forgiveness. You know, forgiveness gives us everything we need for that happiness because forgiveness is a tool that we have in this realm, in this vortex, in this dream that we can use to remember our father. Now, forgiveness is only needed in the dream, actually, because here is where we're forgetting. Forgiveness is not needed in the mind of God because we are remembering we are in the mind of God. So that's why forgiveness is such a juicy little tool that we can have. And it's not even little, it's humongous in the sense of that it brings us back to that love. But we got to want it. And, and what does that mean? It means we bow. We bow to the feet of our father. Saying, I don't know anything. I don't know what anything is for. These are all the first couple of lessons, right? I, I don't know. My thoughts are having its way with me. Holy Spirit, help me. I have no idea. I think I know better. So the course is really helping us to have, a, in modern terms, an epic relationship with the Holy Spirit. And actually, that is the key. The key is to ask for guidance consistently and follow guidance consistently. The thing is that we ask, this is Course of Miracles students, you know, and, and myself as a student, it's, you know, I ask and then I want to do it my way, like Frank Sinatra, you know, I ask, but, you know, I want to control, I want to manipulate, I don't want to get out of the way, I kind of feel, I don't know why, I have more power than God, I can do it better and all that stuff. I fall asleep in the dream, which is part of it. It's part of the duality. And then there's a call for grace. And then there's a call for gentleness, right? There's a call for um, just a sense of softness and, and um, letting go and surrender, right? So there's that bowing down. There's that surrender. Now, to get more clear on what is happiness, I feel would be very helpful with that's what's coming to me is is that sometimes happiness is a little bit confusing because we use it like, oh, I'm happy. Or, you know, my book is live your happy. And people think, you know, it's just a book, a cheerleader happiness. Like when you see the title or when you think about the word, word, word happiness. So ha worldly happiness is very different than the happiness that the course is teaching us. The course is already saying that happiness is an attribute of love. So what does that mean? The, the, the world happiness means that that you need something so you can be happy. The course is teaching you that you're already happy, so you don't need anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So, hello, people. I sound very Cuban and Latin right now. Come on. 
the course is saying that you are happy already and all the happiness you already want, you already have. The world is saying, you want happiness, you go get it. Oh my God, and it's so exhausting, right? Now, recognizing that you are that love, recognizing that you are that happiness, is it challenging? Absolutely in the world, absolutely, hands down. Although what I've noticed in my practice and really immersing myself in the course is, is it, it, it really takes having no compromises and no exceptions. And when you begin to have that little bit of willingness that the course says, I like to say big fat co coconut, huge willingness, because I don't know, I just like to say big, huge willingness. It just really helps me because my obstacles appear so huge, but the point that the Course of Miracles is all you need is a little bit of willingness. It's like, you don't even really need a lot. You just need to really just want a part of you wants to let go of that barrier to love, wants to forgive. And that's the tricky part because we want love, but not really because we still want to look for love outside of ourselves. Or I want, you know, abundance and I want to be really happy, but I still want to think that abundance is outside of me. I still want to believe that money is my salvation instead of remembering that I am abundance. The truth is abundance is that you are as God created you. I am as God created me. That is true abundance. Now, is it that we don't want money? Is it that, you know, you don't like beautiful things? Um, no, absolutely not. Please, God, God I mean, I, I'm sure if I go see God tomorrow and I say, God, I really want to have, you know, I don't know, a Mercedes, an SUV, and, and it makes me really happy. I doubt that my father's going to say, no, 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 honey, you can't have that. That is too luxurious for you, right? So it's not bad to want things in form. It's, it's, and I feel that sometimes Course in Miracles students, we get a little bit confused about, do I, you know, about form and wanting things in form and feel really guilty about it. But what we do is we use form and things and symbols as, as a tool or, or a way we use it and we understand that it doesn't define us. So we give over the Mercedes to spirit. We give over the house to God. We give over what we think we need to God and understand that it doesn't define us, right? So then hence, if you have it or not, you're going to be at peace because your goal is peace first, obviously, because, you know, when you're truly studying the course, that's what you want is peace, right? And, and you're open because you don't know what, what the heck is the best for you, right? So you're open. So the happiness that I'm talking about here, which is the happiness of the course is an attribute that you are. And then you use things in form in the sense of giving it over and recognizing your true nature. And then you have stuff or you have things, but ultimately you remember that you are God's child and that you are abundance because you are as God created you, right? And this is big because I feel sometimes we want to deny things in form or we don't want things. And then, you know, we get very um, guilt. We feel guilty and we become like something is wrong with us because we want to be good course students. And I want that guilt to start to subside because that's not what the course is teaching. Our father wants our joy. So you're not bad because you want things in the world, right? You're just, your, your job is to give it over and not it be your salvation, right? So happiness of the world is I look outside so I could be happy. The happiness of the course is that you are happiness already. So what does that mean? What does that mean is this, and I'll, I'm sure you guys, I don't know if you've seen me before, you've heard me say this story, so I'll say it again for the purpose of teaching is, um, I remember when Live Your Happy came out, I was doing a lot of interviews and podcasts and such, a lot of them. Um, my publicist at New World Library was really, 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 really good at getting me out there. And I remember her, you know, I remember one of the interviews asking me a question that wasn't on the questionnaire, because usually a publisher will give you questions ahead of time. And then you, you know where they're going. But in this case, somebody asked me because I was so enthralled with this happiness 
um, topic that I made it seem that it was so natural, right? So the interviewer says, so what are you trying to say? Can we be happy all the time? Like in a very, you know, like challenging me kind of way, like, can we be happy all the time? And I sat with that and it was just a second and it came out of my mouth. Yes, we can. And I was like, oh, how am I going to get myself out of this? You know, I was trying to go backtrack, you know, it's like, it's like, oh my goodness. Did I just say that? Yes, we could be happy all the time. Oh, oh, oh holy spirit. Holy, holy shit. Holy spirit. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for the bad words. So it's like, holy moly, holy spirit. So it's like, oh my goodness. Did I say, just say yes, that we can be happy all the time. And I was stunned by the answer. And then the words just came out. And it's something I've been saying ever since because it's something that really sits, sits deep with me. The reason that we can be happy all the time, 24 seven, because that's where the question was coming from. The reason we can be, it's because it's what we are. It's an attribute of us. It never, ever, ever, ever goes away. Now, do we fall asleep to that? Do we fall asleep to our true nature, which is love, which is happiness? Yes, we fall asleep to it, but it never goes away. It's always there, right? So again, it's like the happiness umbrella, right? So we have the happiness umbrella and we're under the happiness umbrella and we remember source, we remember God. And then we are out of the happiness umbrella, right? <laughs> and then we forget, right? But when we come back, <laughs> when we come back and we remember happiness umbrella, we're obviously with Mother Mary and we're with Jesus and everybody because we've remembered our inheritance again, right? So what I'm trying to say is that happiness is actually a normal thing. But in this dream, the ego has taught us that happiness is a normal. What the ego and what the society and what this dream that we're experiencing, that we've made of us this semi-nightmare is <laughs> all about that, that forgetting of our inheritance. Mm. So now happiness is a normal. So you know what's normal? fear that's very normal in this world if you ask the question can you be fearful 24 7 seven days a week you probably would say yes can i be depressed 24 hours a day seven days a week yes that's the world of the ego so i sit there and i'm very you know confident in yeah we can be happy all the time 24 7 people look at me strange although what am i up to in this lifetime i'm up to opposite day I'm up to let's, let's turn things around. Let's turn to change our perception that happiness is normal, that easy is normal, that joy is normal, that the understanding when you're at the doctor's office and you've gotten some sort of diagnosis and you're remembering that you have other perfect parts of you that are perfectly fine, that, is, that, that, that starts to be normal, right? So... It was so funny because ever since then, I have had like, I think if I was president, that would be my thing. It's like, guys, we're happy 24, seven, seven days a week. Like just try to get it in your head. Like this is, this is what we are, right? And I'm not saying that it looks like happy, happy, joy, joy. You know, there are times that I really believe that my husband is the cause of my problems. There are many times that I believe that my, my, my son, Ari, He's three and a half now is, is the cause of my upset. Um, I do believe, I do believe a lot of different things. The difference is, is that I I've suffered so much and I've realized, and I've, I've caught the ego so many times that I can discern and I, and I can become the observer of my thoughts. I can step back and really see Maria La Loca, right? Loca's crazy, by the way, the Maria La Loca, the crazy one, just imagine her, you know, like, the soap opera stars, you know, with all the makeup, I don't have it on today, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you are my problem. <laughs> tu eres mi problema, right? It's like, <sighs> you know, with the, with the whole look, right? The whole dramatic thing. So that's how I get sometimes. But then 
I remember. Why? Because it's my inheritance. It's my goal. My goal is to remember my father. My goal is to come back to truth, not only for myself, but for my brother. So I've started to get really good at it because of my practice. It's like you go to the gym, you work out, you get results. You know, you talk to Holy Spirit every day, you channel, you're constantly channeling, you're, you're constantly giving over your day in the morning, you're constantly giving your afternoon, um, you're, you're giving over your moments. Like that's what we do as course students is have an epic ship with the Holy Spirit, that's our teacher, and helping us to forgive, forgive continuously, which is remembering again, your true inheritance, which is happiness. So that takes something, it takes a lot of courage, and it takes, it takes work to let go of having this world define you. I'm going to share a little funny story of how Live Your Happy happened, just because I think it's really great to kind of show what happiness is and how the world doesn't need to define you, especially those of you that have projects or those of you that have aspirations or like feel like a purpose to, I don't know, whatever it is you're feeling called to do. And that could be anything. Um, are you guys interested in hearing hearing this? Yes. Okay, good. I just want to make sure you're there. All right, good. <laughs> Maria, can you? Hear so, us? oh, she can't hear us. No. Yeah. When when live your happy happened, which was something that was a really big thing for me, just because I have dyslexia, um, I don't like writing. I'm a big voice text person. Um, <clears throat> I don't even know if I could spell a lot very correctly sometimes <laughs> thank god for google whatever google translator or whatnot um so i wouldn't consider myself an author or writer or anything like that so when i was speaking at you know big conferences and such and i would be asked for a book i would i would just shyly give them a, a cd that i recorded because i wanted to shut people's mouth it's like i'm not writing a book here's my cd take it take it or leave it you know I didn't want to write a book. So that was my process. It was, I was very shy about it. I didn't, I, I never even thought I would do it. Um, so when, when I, one day I'm, I, I like myself some Pinot Noir every once in a while. Pinot Noir is a, is, is a red wine. I like, I like it. And I was having it one day. <laughs> there she goes. There goes Ellie. Let's go Ellie. Ellie's so funny. I love it. Okay. So I was having myself a little bit of Pinot Noir. Well, not a little bit, a lot, so much so <laughs> that I put a post on Facebook that said um, something in the works of, I don't look for happiness outside of me, like a really, a really great post, I think at that time, it got some attention. And then at the end, I was so, I don't know, happy, happy with the Pinot Noir. At the end, I wrote excerpt from my book, like excerpt from my book. I literally wrote the thing and I put excerpt from my book. Now, what is an excerpt? It comes from a book, by the way, that's already written, which I didn't have. I thought I was writing an affirmation or a quote. I don't know. It was just a mess, right? So what happens is, is that D. Patrick Miller, which published The Disappearance of the Universe, um, saw my post. All right. I, I've heard of him, obviously, because of Disappearance of the Universe. And he wrote me a mail on a messenger. And I was fell off my chair when he asked me about my book. And I was wondering about my book too, because I didn't have one. So I looked <laughs> at the post that I had written the day before. And obviously I wrote, I had a book. So I had forgotten the whole thing. All right. So this is really funny. I didn't write back to him because of this reason. Second, I don't want to write a book. I have my CD. I'm good. But then Patrick seemingly finds my email somehow and writes to me my email. And he says, you know, I've, I've heard about your book and I want to talk about your book and all these things. And then I said, and then finally I wrote to him, we ended up, I ended up saying we can have a conversation. That's fine. But I, he didn't know I didn't have a book at this point. I was trying to still figure this out with spirit. Like, what am I, how am I going to get myself out of this mess? So to make a long story short, Patrick said to me, um, so Maria, I want to know more about your book. And I said, I said, Patrick, I, I don't have a book and I'm, I'm sorry I didn't write to you in your first email, but I don't have a book. It was the Pinot Noir talking. That's what I said. The Pinot Noir was talking. And then he started laughing and he said to me, well, you know, that's fine. He's like, I know that you're a prominent teacher, you're teaching, and I really want to help you with, with the book. And um, I said, okay. 
And then at this point, I was already so not invested because I didn't make it matter so much. For me, it was sort of a journey. And this is how we need to be in life when we're following the course is that we're, we're very filled with wonder. And that's where I went. I was very filled with wonder. Um, I was very playful at this point. Um, very like, okay, well, offering me, offering to help, um, you know, saying I, maybe we can write a book proposal. You can have an idea of live your happy. We can um, send it to the publisher. Then you get the book deal and then they pay you a book advance and then you write the book. So he's, so I said, oh, so basically they're going to pay me to write the book. And then I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. So then that started to get my attention a little bit. <laughs> and then him and I eventually started to work together. It was a beautiful collaboration. Um, for those that have read Live Your Happy, um, you'll see the, the, the way that Patrick edited the book is just beautiful. You really hear, it's like we're having a conversation on the couch. He was really good with keeping my cuckoo and my caca and all my funny little things. Um, it was, it's really sweet. So to make a long story short, I want to jump to Patrick really feeling that my book needed to be at Hay House. And I remember him like just being really adamant about it. And I felt like, well, I don't really care because I didn't really want to write a book in the first place. So that is how we need to be when we're core students is, is this non-investment. It's like this letting go, this surrender of, it's not like you don't care, but it's that you want God's will. That's, that's the end in point. You want God's will. So he turned it into Hay House. It was, we, obviously it wasn't the book that was written. It was a proposal of what the book would be like. That means that you have an introduction. That means I have my chapters in the sense of chapter titles. And I have a skeleton of the book, but it's not written yet. So Hay House denies, denies the book. Now, this is a really important part because this is what we're, we're here to practice. So Patrick says, Hey, Maria, you know, I have to tell you that Hay House said no to the book. I don't even know if they read it. They're not interested. And I'm very no, disappointed. And I wasn't, I was so excited. I was so excited. And this is practicing the course because I wasn't attached to it. It was like, wow, great. Now I don't have to write a book. This is fantastic. And then he says to me, well, Maria, wait, wait, wait a second. We're going to give it to other publishers in January. So I said, okay, fine. And then I said, then he says, you're the happiest. How can I say? He says, you're the happiest rejected writer I've ever experienced in my life. And I said, you know what, Patrick? I don't know what it is. I made, I was an actor before I became a teacher and such. I was an actor and, and model and TV host. And I made it matter so much. And I lost myself in it. And I, and I really had a hard time. And I shared this in my book, in the book as well, of like this journey of wanting for approval or, 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 or trying to fight and get the job that I decided um, that um, I decided that I didn't want to bring that into my calling to be a teacher of God. I wanted to make it fun. I wanted to, to really enjoy it and not give it value in the sense of it defines me because I had already done that. So when he said to me, it was such a compliment when he said like, you're the first, you know, you're like the first happy rejected writer for me, it was like such progress in the course, because that's what the course is teaching us, my friends. And that's what the happiness is about is that you're, you're whatever, whatever they call you or whatever you think you are, it doesn't define you in the sense of the personality self. So your job doesn't define you. My job doesn't define me. My job as a teacher doesn't define me. That's my work. Um, being an author of a book doesn't define me. Being a teacher of the course doesn't define me. You know, um, what else? Uh, playing pickleball doesn't define me. I was playing pickleball today. Um, all these things, like all of this does not define me. Being a coach, being uh, whatever it is that Maria does because Maria loves, loves to share. That's fine. But the key is if you want to live in a happy state and you want to know how to live happy, that's the key is the recognition that none of that defines me. God does. Beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> that's it right there. <laughs> Perfect. That's it. <laughs> Yeah. 
I'm going now you guys apparently everybody can hear us except for Maria so I'm going to try to send Maria a little message nothing can give it to you you know and when you start to recognize that that God defines you um you start to let go of a lot of things and let God's will be done and you still go out in the world and you still do your projects like Stephanie and Lloyd are doing this beautiful project and they're sharing and no attachment, you know, um, whatever it is that you're doing individually, individually in your life, I just want you to know that you're so taken care of and you're so loved and you're so cherished and you're so acknowledged because you are God's child, period. So you are worthy of that happiness because it is what you are. So go, go do things, go out in the world, explore. You know, I, I do it all the time. I explore, I buy things. I love beautiful things. I, whatever it is, my dear, my dear friend, Kathy is on here. She knows, she knows how, she knows how, how it works. I rented a boat on Saturday. We were dancing. I was having Prosecco. We were having a good time right? It's living. You walk and you live. And in the background, you know who your father is. You know, the Holy Spirit is your direction. You know, you don't have to tell the world you're just in it. You're living in it. And that's the key. So I feel like I'm complete right now. So I can take some questions or some sharing. Okay, Maria, um, Maria, but right now. I am Let me get a little I'm grateful. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I know everybody else. Can you guys hear me? You guys can't hear me? Maria, we can't. Can. Okay, good. Maria can't hear us. So I know so, how to handle this now. Just give me one second, okay? Just give me one second. Yeah, good idea, Lloyd. Lloyd is going to... Uh, My brother and sisters are figuring out how to... I can't hear them. I haven't been able to hear them the whole thing. Yeah. But it's all... It's fine. It's fine. Just one second now, Maria. Hang on. Let me see. Can Maria see this? Ooh. No, I can't hear you. Okay, now I'm not sure. We can't hear you. We we can hear her. Yes. Yeah, but but she can't hear us. We can't hear you. <laughs> now, we every, can't hear you well, we hear you but you can't hear us can you guys hear them yeah everybody else oh you can hear them yeah yeah oh you can oh hold on a second so let's just I'm gonna just send all right you. go there we go i can hear you now okay can you Perfect. hear us now yes <laughs> uh, that is fantastic maria this was a real little forgiveness opportunity which lasted about 10 seconds it's amazing. It's amazing how fast you can forgive when you just totally let go, right? And give it over to Holy Spirit. But at the very beginning, when we introduced you, we were introducing you, but you couldn't hear it. <laughs> so that was fine. It, it's all good. Yeah. And you did I love it. You know, what happens is, is that my input and my output was on the same, same area in the same speaker. Right. So I didn't have a chance to change that. So that's what happened. It's I can't hear you. So yeah, it was perfect. I, I love it. I love how I didn't even hear you introduce me or nothing. Right. I, I didn't even know what was going on. I was like, God, these people are very quiet, but you know, I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> <laughs> that really gave you the, that really gave you the floor, right? No, no. Absolutely. I was like, I, I know you said that, you know, I start speaking fairly quickly, but I was like, well, I, I feel like you know, they're really trusting. And they're not going to say a thing and I'm going to go for it. <laughs> it's amazing how that happened. We just, we got to roll with it, right? And it was absolutely amazing. So. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lloyd. I appreciate that. It was. It was, yeah. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So at this point, how would you feel about taking some questions or comments or? Are you yeah, I'm open for comments, questions, you know, it's always really good to get feedback and not, not only just to see what you've learned, maybe your takeaways. Um, yeah. Okay. So I just want to say that I gave your book to a cousin of mine a few weeks ago. 
And uh, I had introduced her to the course. I, I gave her the disappearance. It was too heavy for her. Gotcha. But I gave her your book and she absolutely loves it. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's awesome. Fantastic. And I just recently read your book as well. Well, we both did. And I think right when I think about it right now, off the top of my head, I really liked the example you gave of when you lost some luggage or you lost something on the plane on the plane on the airplane and you felt that you were being guided by the holy spirit by being by really demonstrating this uh feeling of certainty mm -hmm. you went in and you 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 made a you were just certain that you you know you wanted them to look for it or take an extra step or go the extra mile and finding what your camera or whatever it was you lost yes i really liked that i thought it was like this just demonstration of certainty it's love and certainty. I, I really got a lot out of that. Found it really helpful because I feel like Spirit said to me one time, "Let your experience speak for itself." Mm. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was. It, I re, I remember that. Mem I remember that very well because it was such a profound moment. It was very mystical. It's like I couldn't even. There was such such determination, not in an egoic way, but a very loving, excited. Um, persistent i don't know what it was but it was so guided um i just felt that that camera is so helpful that somehow it needed to get back to me if, if it needed to so when i was driving home i i really started tearing up and the camera was next to me and i and i had i think it's like kind of experiencing the holy instant of just laughing and just recognizing oh my goodness like it's incredible so that's beautiful. Yeah. And I recommend, highly recommend, if you haven't read Maria's book yet, by all means, uh, it's called How to Live Your Happy, right, Maria? Yeah, it's called Live Your Happy. Live right. Your Happy. And it's excellent. Oh, thank you, Lloyd. Yeah, it looks like this. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> beautiful. Okay, so do we want to take maybe like a, like a two or three minute intermission? just in case anybody wants to, needs to get a glass of water, use the washroom, and then we can come back and yeah, just invite anybody that wants to ask a question by all means and use your electronic hand. I see one hand is up already. So I think it might be an idea just to take a quick little break. All right, I always call it the stretch your leg break. I think it's great. Let's do that. I'll be okay. right back. Yep. All right. All right. <clears throat>
Stephanie's just getting herself a coffee. Hey. Hi. 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 So I had forgotten also to, I didn't complete the story about the book and finally it did get published. I forgot, I forgot that part. In January, Patrick resubmitted it to different um, publishers. And the one that ended up publishing it was New World Library, which um, they're in California in the Bay Area. And they also published, um, actually Shakti Gwain um, started that publishing company um, many, 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 many years ago. And they also published um, a lot of Deepak's books. And the biggest book they published was um, The Power of Now by Edgar Tolle. Mm -hmm. So um, I was excited. And also I was happy because they were excited about the book as of Hay House, you can totally tell that it wasn't supposed to be there. And I hear now, you know, Gary, Renard and I are friends and he was with Hay House for a while. And I can see the contrast of why I got chosen by, by um, New World Library is because it was, they really gave me a lot of promotion and they really paid attention. And I really needed that for this book because I didn't have a name. So I just wanna say that it always, when you're really let go and let God's will be done, because we don't know what's the best for us. Like I could have been egotistical and been like, oh, I want Hay House or whatever. But I didn't do that. I was very open and, and, and filled with wonder. And then look how beautiful it just, it's always perfect. It's, it's, it's always perfect. Exactly what you're given is perfect. Even though it might not seem like it, in the back of your head, just remember it's perfect. It's just perfect. We read that a couple of days ago in, in the course. Right. About all things are working towards the good even if we don't think it is right yeah it says only the ego would think that it's not all working towards the good absolutely yes yeah very yeah. true yeah very yeah. wise words yeah all right speaking so of hay house um gary was sort of he, he's not as happy as he used to be with hay house right um, I know, I don't, I think this next book, I think they're going to self-publish it, I, I think. Um, but he, he at, when I spoke to him, he just wasn't very happy just because they don't, they have so many authors, they don't have time to give sometimes for the publicity. So he told me I was in a good place. This is at the very beginning of the thing. He says, you're a really good place because A House is a little bit congested, he said. So um, I'll take it. I'll take it. So beautiful. Yeah. Hey guys. So uh, it looks like Kathy Silva has her hand up. So Kathy, feel free now to unmute yourself and go ahead and, and do your thing, sister. She says she can unmute herself. Okay. All right. Let's just uh, hang on. There. All right. Can you hear there me? You now? Go. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's it. Awesome. <laughs> Good. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of things that happened during your meditation. Thank so you. So beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful, sister. You just have such a gift for that. I love that you're, you're doing more and more of that now. Um, so when, when you said, remember that you have everything that you need, instantly the song popped into my head. All you need is love. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> All you need is love. And and then you said, then you talked about love, you know, that you have all the love that you need. <laughs> that is so perfect. And then, um, so I have been kind of um, thinking about how we relate to Holy Spirit, right? Holy Spirit. And so many times 
it feels like, um, you know, we're looking at Holy Spirit as like another person, like from Holy Spirit to us, like we're in a relationship with Holy Spirit. And, um, and I think in your, when you were talking, you were talking about having an epic relationship with Holy Spirit and which I know that involves like complete trust and transparency and honesty. Um, and also that, that is for me, it's, I've come to realize that is, uh, that is our true self. Holy spirit is our true self. Um, and, uh, but going back to the meditation again, when, when you had us, um, envision or, or, um, realize Holy spirit was with us. And oftentimes I know that, um, in the pathways meditations that it says to, to imagine Holy spirit in the form that you recognize, or that's good for you. And, um, and it, it's, it just like dropped in all of a sudden that spirit is a collective. Mm. It's like a group. And the instant that I thought of not just spirit as like Jesus or, or just this one, you know, singular being, but as a, as a, like my spirit, I could see, like, I could feel like my spirit guides, my, my angels are just like spirit was a, was a, like a combination. It was just like this spirit that, that is it with many aspects. I had this amazing tingling in my head. <laughs> it was just, it was so incredible. And and it's funny because I've been experiencing that a lot lately in meditation when I just, um, you, you know, go into the, into the love and just feel it. And, and I've just been encouraged to just go into that feeling, even in my body and how I just feel that, that tingling and being able to just be with that tingling, but that it was just like, so intense it was just it was it was wonderful it was it was amazing oh my god so, I, I feel it yeah. I have actually I'm like welling up in tears because of that just because I felt that too and um just to be able to just really I I get it because I you can't even put it in words that's how how deep it goes um but when spirit is is me and it's like the whole meditation, it was like spirits in me. Um, and then when it was collectively to join in the circle, I also felt that collective energy, mm. um, that spirit one runs through everything. Um, so I'm, I'm yeah. really grateful that you felt that. And also what you said at the beginning in reference that you're happy, I'm doing more of this, the meditations, it's something that, um, I, I, it's just started to come to me and I really love it. I love the spontaneous meditations. I really don't know where it's going. I always like to take little verses here and there of the course. Cause it really ignites me. It ignites the meditation, but I was, I started doing that at first with, it started coming through with my one-on-one -on -one sessions that I would do a meditation at the beginning, having the participant take the meditation. So I would start speaking, but I would just get guidance of what that person needed. And they were all very different. And then I started to listen to meditations on YouTube, Kathy, and I was so into them. And then I said, why don't I start doing my own meditations on the Course of Miracles? And so then two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I started to record my, the, my meditations that I like based on the course, such as meditations on giving it over to spirit, channeling spirit. Um, morning meditation, like in the morning, waking up, morning affirmations based on the course. So I love that you love it because I remember you giving me really good feedback and it really ignited me and your support has always been a really big conduit of my work. Um, Kathy's part of an incredible little coaching group we have. It's 10, nine or 10 women and we're all just up to just living the course of miracles. So um, thank you, Kathy, for your love. And I'm so happy you're here. I was so surprised to see you there. It got me really happy. Well, I'm part of the reason why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. That's I love it. Kathy, would you like to share a little, would you like to share that? 
about how that happened? Yeah. Sure. Well, Stephanie and I were kind of doing a debrief on our on my channel. I got um, I received a a personal angel channel from um, from Stephanie. Like I guess it was a month ago or so, and we hadn't had a chance to really discuss it. And there was uh, there were some things that we were just we were just going over it in more detail, and. Um, I think that you just, Stephanie just asked about you. I think that was it. It seems like you came to, you came to mind for them as, as a possible surprise guest. And I'm on these calls every, well, almost every week. Um, Cause I just, I love this group. I just, I, I love being here. I just feel so, I don't know. It just feels so real and so authentic. Um, but uh, when when Stephanie mentioned it, I said, "Oh, absolutely, she would do that. <laughs> I know she would. I know she would be so excited to do that." So, so it was like, "Okay, it's a done deal. I'm gonna ask her next time." <laughs> Kathy, I love it. Yo, yeah, totally. Especially the surprise part. Like, it's a surprise. Anything to kind kind of do something fun or you know. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, a, I knew oh that my you God. would be perfect. That yes. is so funny. I have to tell you my little secret behind the scenes before all this is that I kept on seeing people like Lisa Natoli or somebody say they did this surprise thing. And I'm like, well, when the heck are they going to ask me? I want to do a surprise <laughs> too. That is surprise. Oh my God. I swear to God, I was thinking, but I said, you know what? It'll come around whenever it comes. Oh. But I knew it was coming. I didn't know when, but I was like, I want to do a surprise that is hilarious that is so wonderful and you know i just want to say this the way this all started was so spontaneous and unplanned we i woke up one morning about 7 30 in the morning and i sent a message to a friend of ours sue ann orkovarch i think her name is she's a part of our course in miracle support and just like that i said sue ann would you like to be our surprise guest speaker today on miracle monday well 30 seconds later i, I got a response yes in caps exclamation mark that's, that's, it was born you know, it was birthed in that yeah. moment and like lloyd you know lloyd was saying too like it's so wonderful because it's good for everybody because the participants you know the everyone that arrives don't know who it is so they're trusting holy spirit and then the guests certainly trusting holy spirit they have no idea they're entering into right an arena where they probably don't really know anybody or whatever but it's just I, I, we just feel like it's a really wonderful opportunity for it's everyone. just turning it over to holy spirit everything right it's so great it's it's well it's i mean using this is you're practicing the course it's like you're living it basically and that's that's everything you know it's and i love i love the joy behind it i really love the joy behind it i feel that trusting trusting spirit is is a very joyful process that's why i like the surprise and all that it's just it's making it very light and fun and airy and that's what i said at the beginning right but it was so funny i didn't hear anything you guys said i just figured you guys were quiet and you're like okay well i i guess i'll do a meditation <laughs> let's do this yeah, well i tell you you handled it very well like you didn't <laughs> skip a beat you just carried right along it must have been like you guys can hear them and i can't hear them. you guys it must have been like i didn't even know what was happening that's so funny that's i'm happy it worked out it's never happened before either that's the first <laughs> yeah the one the reason i caught on because i saw the chat right now the chat was on fire i didn't see the chat i just saw it now when we went on break but the reason i figured out was kathy because kathy was trying to tell me she was figuring it out she was telling me and that's how you know what it was so perfect i loved it because there was such a flow there and I, I feel the dynamic was great it was absolutely spot on right like, i mean it couldn't have been any other way and that's part of the trust and like spirit said to me one time look at everything with deep curiosity with a you know a sense of wonder and deep curiosity so that's what I did when I, when we couldn't figure out the technical aspect of it. I just, you know, you started the meditation and I just joined in the meditation and forgot all about the technical glitches, so to speak, which there really were no technical glitches in reality. Well, like, obviously, because I didn't even know there was any. Right. <laughs> yeah. Maria, just one, one quick question. You're in touch with Gary uh, quite often. How is... Um, um, 
um, Cindy doing? She was having um, a problem with I, it. I actually, right? I actually had a conversation with her because I saw online that she was having um, pain with her eyes. And then okay. I, I called her immediately and we had a conversation. It was very brief. And she was saying she, she sounded she was a lot better and getting a lot better. She was taking some, um, I think, drops or something, um, and that her vision was coming back. Last I heard, so I, I, I felt like she was in such good spirits. Um, I didn't think there was anything wrong with her. That's how how great she sounded. So, excellent. I think she's doing a lot better. Excellent. Okay, guys. So when we get back, do you have a, we have time for a couple more? Uh, I think uh, Eli. Would you like to unmute yourself? And go right ahead, Eli. Oh, actually, hang on. Let me just see now. Ask to unmute. Okay, you're not you're you are you are not interested or you're not prepared. Well, no, I was saying <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was saying that it wouldn't let me unmute myself. Okay. My I guess, yeah. <laughs> Can't read my lips, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Like, listen, anyway, first off, Maria, I wanted to thank you for everything you shared with us. Like it was, it was just wonderful. And uh, during thank the meditation, um, what happens when I meditate is I go on a happy dance. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody else, but I, I, my body sits here very still. But when I bring in the Holy Spirit, we just, we're just dancing. And it's wonderful. So that's what, what happened to me again while doing the meditation. And any slight time that my mind starts wandering, in other words, leaving the dance, I feel a tinge of a headache. I go back to dancing and it's all good again. And so oh, anyway, that's the experience I go through. So, but I wanted to just say that, cause you talked a lot about how in this illu illusion, everything is fearful and that's the norm for the illusion but um but god wills for us is to be happy and what happened like i smile like a lot i over smile and sometimes the cheeks hurt because and i often get asked what are you smiling about and i can't answer because i don't have an answer i'm just smiling and it it's a natural it, right it's like a it's natural exactly it's natural yes. it's just and that's, that's natural what, actually that's the that's actually natural but people think it's weird or something's wrong with her but that's actually not, yeah natural. or you're thinking something we want to hear the funny or whatever and it isn't that way it's just and even when there's something say not so nice going on out there inside guess what <laughs> it's still here it's like yeah it's weird but anyway i just wanted to share that because i understood what you were saying about happy that's that's what god wills for us yeah, yeah. and it's, and it's our, right and there it's, it's actually there. Our, it's actually our true nature that's why yes. we again what i said to the podcast person it's like yeah i mean i literally was in shock when when she says so what are you saying we could be happy all the time and i was like yes and i was like oh hey where <laughs> i was going next but then it's it's just it's our inheritance it's our birthright i mean it's all over the book i mean i think happiness is in course of miracles very often that word and i think it's there for a reason also i had seen that you had um a bottle of wine or something did you show me a bottle <laughs> i was i was teasing you i love it i love it thank you my favorite it. is malbec malbec okay yeah that's good too but I'll, i like my pinot noir um thank you i love it wish i, I could it. share a bottle with you <laughs> Yes, where are you at? I'm in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Okay, well, that's going to be difficult, but maybe one day we can put together a little wine party here. And All right. Have tea. People are going to have tea. You know, you don't need to have, be a drinker. My husband doesn't like alcohol. He only has green tea, so. Yeah, my husband doesn't drink either alcohol, no. <laughs> okay, we'll get drunk and they can drink their tea, okay? <laughs> I hope Stephanie and Lloyd will show up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? We're here all the time. Yeah. All right. I used to drink a lot of wine, but now I I, I don't drink anything. Not for any yeah. reason. It just I it know. Works. I it's just so guided too. I feel I go through my little episodes of it too. I feel like I was very grateful for Pinot Noir actually because Live Your Happy was born from that Pinot Noir post. 
I actually thank Pinot Noir in my acknowledgments in my book. I say thank you to Pinot Noir. For <laughs> <laughs> She's thanking an illusion. <laughs> I could swear I thank the Pinot Noir. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to thank you, Stephanie and Lloyd. I, I saw a lot of um, pictures with you with the book in different places. I thought that was so cute. Very sweet. Very, very sweet. Oh, it's our pleasure. Now, uh, do, you have time for, do you have time for one more question? Um, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Deanna Bryan from Newfoundland. Deanna, go ahead and unmute yourself and let me know if you can't. Uh, can there you hear me? Oh, you're up. You're up. Hi. You're up. Yep. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Hi sweetie. Hello to everybody. Um, first of all, um, it is so nice to be with you all and hear about others' experiences with um, feeling things in their body when you're meditating, because it's not something that I talk about like on to friends or whatnot, because they would look at me very strangely. <laughs> um, so I feel it's really, really nice to be in a, in a, in a group that understands that, that feeling. Um, and it's, it comes to me very easily now where, um, I do feel the tingles in my, in my head and it'll, slowly kind of go down i'll feel it in my throat and go out through my hands and it goes it does literally go right down to my toes and it comes up but i feel this swirling motion um especially like in my my core and when we all kind of you said about like like hold hands like as a as a collective with the rest of the world type of thing like it was the amount of tingles that were going through my arms and my hands brought me to brought me to tears and um so it was really nice to kind of hear some other people saying they felt that too um so i wanted to say that but my question is you were talking about it's okay to want items and it's okay to walk through life and experience and explore and all those things. And that was really, that was something I've been wondering about and kind of struggling with because I was like, oh, so does, does that mean that we shouldn't want or we shouldn't, is that just ego and that kind of thing? And we were talking about what we want or you were talking about what we want, but for me, I was thinking about, I don't want to give up my car, or I don't want to, because I'm at a point financially um, where I had a car accident and brain injury, which is all an illusion, I get that, but having to go through the steps of letting my car go, literally, um, and letting go transportation and whatnot, it's like, I don't know if spirit is telling me just like, I, I can let it go. I'm, I know, you know, some way or another, I'll be fine. It'll be in, you know, spirit will guide me. But at the same time, I guess the question is more, how do you know, not how do you know, How do you dis discern between what your mind is telling you or your like what ego is trying to get you to think or spirit? Like I don't, and how do you like, like uh, do I go downstairs and I, I know I'm talking in terms of do's, but like I've been avoiding, you know, picking up the phone and calling them and say, okay, you know, let's go through the process and take the car type of thing, right? Does, it, does anything, do any of this make sense is like logically through the spirit, like I, I, like I get it, but I don't get it. 
I, I think it's so sweet. You can talk about this all day long. You just, I mean, seriously, we can, I, I could totally understand what you're saying and we can all relate. I, I get your question. Um, and it's, it's the same thing in the sense of when you were saying that when you want things, you know, it's not bad to want things and you're saying, well, you're like in another position. It's like you, you're actually being called to let go of something like a car or, or whatnot. Obviously I would imagine you want another car, right? No, <laughs> you don't want another car. Okay, so no. at this point is a letting is a, is is a letting go, but it's 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 the same thing because you ultimately you're gonna want things, so that's fine. But the letting go part right now, what I'm receiving is, I don't know, I really don't know, but you do, and that is a really really good thing. And and the reason I know that you know is because you have the Holy Spirit inside your mind, so we're going to do a process and you're going to close your eyes and you're going to tell me what's the answer to that because you know and then i can give you a little bit of feedback obviously right so i'm going to do this little process i learned at pathways which i love so i'm going to ask you and everybody's going to hold space for our sister i'm going to ask you Deanne, what are you? You're going to say love. Love. Where are you? You're going to say in the mind of love. In the mind of love. Okay, take a breath there with that. So what are you making real? And let me know what you're making real. In the sense of this situation, what is the realness there? You're making it real that you're losing your car. You're making it real the guilt of not wanting to call the place. What what's going on? Fear of not having transportation. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Fear. So fear of not having transportation. That's what you're making real. Like, oh my god, I'm not gonna That's be able to get I'm around. Making right? Good, good. It's so beautiful to get to this place because there's like exposing private thoughts here, you know, because you didn't say it that way earlier, right? So it's like this really big fear of, of not having transportation. Good. So take that in there. Ah. All right. So now I want you to recognize that the power to heal is within you and that you know, you know that you know, because you're God's child. So I want you to ask Holy Spirit, what is really real here? And let me know what you receive. Love and it's going to be okay. Love and it's going to be okay. That's correct. Just take that in, love and it's going to be okay. What else is real? What else might be coming? Any feelings, any sensations, any visions? My palms are really warm and tingly. Mm -hmm. I feel, feel warmness in my throat. I'm thinking like the, the tingles and warmness in my throat is saying I'm is a reminder to like it's telling me I I need it to express. Mm hmm. Good. And I feel the group's love. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Now, from this awakened perspective, from this insight, right? Because now you're in truth. Now you're in. You're in that space of, of oneness, of that knowledge, of that true power, right? Of, I mean, you just basically gave yourself that answer. Now, from this awakened perspective, how can you be in the situation? Let go. And put it. Give it over to give it all over to spirit and trust. 
Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Take a breath here, put your hand on your heart. Just want you to see yourself, you know, just following guidance and whatever's the next steps will be the next steps. And you will know because you will take it whenever it's supposed to be. In the meantime, there's a sense of letting go of guiltlessness or, or not doing or doing something just, you know, just like another participant said so beautifully, like just the spirit. Beautiful. Amen. You may open your eyes. Beautiful, Deanne. Thank you for that experiment or that process. Thank you. You Thank know, you. Um, I really appreciate that. I really, really appreciate that. <laughs> you will believe how much I, that I feel like a weight just off my shoulders. Yeah, sweetie. It's like, you know, you will, you, 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 how do you know you haven't made the call for the car, right? Or whatever, right? You haven't, how do you know you weren't supposed to be as you haven't? And that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's not the time. It will be the time when it is. And that is perfect. Mm -hmm. you, you know, if you're going to get the bus, you're going to dance with Holy Spirit all the way to the bus stop. I have no idea, but you, <laughs> it's all good. You know, it's so beautiful because I feel that as a facilitator and teacher, I can't remember somebody saying this, but I think it was Byron Katie. It's, it's, is, is that, you know, or, or actually I learned this at pathways is like, you really empower the other one to really understand that they have the answer, you know, cause you're in your head, you're on, you're in your own beliefs. So I can make suggestions as I have, but ultimately, you know, and that is beautiful because you do. And then you have a different type of confidence. Like, you know, I'm going to be all right. You should have seen your face change. You know, just, you can see all the colors. I know they record this, but you should see your face and the, the trust, how it came in. And um, thank you for trusting. And that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to the group. You see, this, you see this card? Trust would settle every problem now that's what you have to live by. <laughs> yes i yeah. love that yeah Marie, i'm also dexlexic <laughs> i'm not the only one. Oh my god you should see my numbers i always have to ask a hundred times because i'll turn them around all kinds of ways and it's just really silly it's so funny you know? <laughs> And I got pieces of book all over the place, but I've never put it together. <laughs> I love it. Well, it was really, it was really cool. I was definitely meant to be here today. That's for Woo! sure. It already happened. Woop, woop. Woop, woop, yeah. woop, woop. You know, it's, it's so synchronistic too, because um, I'm doing workshops every month on different themes of the course. And this weekend I'm doing one on Saturday on forgiveness. And if any of you want to come, you know, please come. It's, it's, it's a lot of value, low cost. I only charge $19 for my workshops. They're about an hour and a half um, with processes and meditation and such. So I, anybody that feels called to be there, um, I invite you to, because it's a lot of what we've integrated and talked about today and forgiveness is, is everything. So I'll be diving deep on that. Um, this, this weekend, what I'll do is I'll put the, the link here on the chat, um, but I'll also forward it to um, to Stephanie to post it. So hopefully you guys can be there. It's on Saturday in, at 11 in the morning. Um, I'm really excited about the meditation part because I just don't know what's gonna come through. I have no idea. <laughs> That's what I love about it. So also on my YouTube channel, as I mentioned, I have and I think Lloyd and Stephanie know this. I upload a lot of talks I give on the course. And I also upload all of my meditations on there. And they're all, you can access them for free. So I just did one on channeling spirit. And my birthday was this past Friday. And I did a happy birthday meditation that you listen to on your birthday. Or you listen to it anytime you want to give yourself the gift of remembering who you are. It's so good. So check it out. It's called happy birthday meditation. So beautiful. Yeah. Totally up your alley, Lloyd and Stephanie, because it's just so spontaneous, not thinking about it. It's right. really sweet. 
That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, I just was going to see if any, is there anybody here that would like to offer a prayer or a poem, anything at all that you feel inspired that you want to read a little something? Or... <laughs> 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 Kathy <laughs> is there. And of course, this is not planned. Remember now, guys, all this, none of this is planned. <laughs> and go ahead and then. I love on. it. Uh, okay, Kathy, can you? Just speak in a minute. Okay, I think we're good. I just did. Okay, and I just picked this at random. Maria, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for um, having me. But this is in Stephanie's book that she wrote called Let the Love Light In, a book of her channelings for those of you that don't know. Um, so I see, besides Maria, a couple of new faces. Anyway, the writer, and I just love this book, The Writer in Our Mind. The problem is the author, the writer in our mind who tells us we are separate and cannot hold, W-H-O-L-E, we find. The master of illusion, he cannot keep us bound. We must move up and onward through the corridors of our mind. And standing at the precipice of all our faults despair, an ancient hand is waiting to lead us out of here. His love and mercy calls us back to home we know. This home, our true pasture, and in it do we glow. This place is not material as we know it here on earth. It is fantastical and splendid with crystal grids and mirth. And on the love that waits for us, we cannot know it now. Yet somewhere deep inside us, we know it oh so well. The care and love of heaven, it cannot be denied. No matter how we wander into falsity and lies. The light is here and now, my friend, my brother of the light. So take this journey with me now, for together we'll make it right. Stay not too long in anguish. Sink not too long in fright. The angels, they await you to lessen up your plight. When sink in pain, you tarry and falter on your way. The answer will forever be in light and love today. That always gets me down to my depths. Thank you, Stephanie, again. Thank you so much for reading. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I hear that, Kathy, and I just, uh, it, uh, it just feels so new to me, if you know what I mean, because it just came through me. It didn't come, come from me, and I'm sure you can understand that. So beautiful. There was a moment in the talk that there was, I was talking about things defining us or some sort of thing, and then I started welling up, and I, I was just the reminder of that. God defines us. It was very, very, very powerful. It reminds me of that paragraph, just that space between the words. It's just that all-encompassing love. Um, I felt it here today. So thank you, everyone. It's been fantastic. And we do have to do it again, Maria. Yes, I would love it. It was really, really fun. And a surprise again. I want it to be a surprise again. <laughs> right, will be a surprise. And you know what else I had a little inspiration about? Just to let you guys know. Uh, I don't know when it was. A little while ago, I, I was inspired to, at some point, invite all of our surprise guest speakers together as one in the moment on a Zoom. Yeah, like a panel type of thing. Like everybody. Yeah, that's sweet. That's right. a good idea. Yeah, once we get enough surprise guest speakers together <laughs> to create a panel... I think it'd be a really great. Well, we've you know, had quite a few already. Yeah, we have. Yeah, maybe yeah. two or three more times. Yeah, right? We had we had actually David Hoffmeister drop in on us. That's oh, nice. Yeah. So I think you have a pretty good group. I'm almost there, Stephanie, because you don't need so many either, because then it's a lot. So Absolutely. the only other guy we got to get on board uh, is Gary. All right, I'll I'll um I'll shoot. I'm actually gonna speak with him on Thursday. He's gonna be coaching my doing a little coaching session with my group, yeah. one on you know to the group. So I'll I'm gonna have a little bit of connection with him because I need to send him some information. So I'll 
I'll, I'll let him know. That'd oh, be please terrific. do. Yeah, put in a good word for yeah. us. <laughs> I will. I will. I think he would do it. Just like Kathy was feeling I would do it. I think knowing Gary, I think he would do it too. He just loves this stuff. That's fantastic. And I just want to also say too that, you know, this is going to be uploaded on our support group. And it, we have a very good viewership on our videos once we put them on YouTube. Beautiful. I, so this is going to reach a lot of parts of the mind at a later time, although it's all one, but you get my drift. I do get your drift, baby. <laughs> I do get your drift, honey. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank all right. you so much, Maria. And say love to Christian. I will. I'm sure he's wondering because he, he got home and he slammed the door. He probably thought the interview was over. He's like, how long is this interview? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, she went into the vortex, but I loved it. It was so perfect. And thank you everyone for having me. And I'm looking forward to being back. And I hope to see you guys on Saturday. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Maria, send the link and the info. We'll put it on A Course in Miracles support. Or you can put it on there as well. Please feel free. Thank you. All right, everyone. Love, love you guys. Love like a big coconut. Love you, everybody.